Welcome to Medically Speaking, a podcast for your good health from the University of Maryland Medical Center and the University of Maryland School of Medicine in Baltimore. In the United States, more than 200,000 people under the age of 45 have suffered a stroke. While rare, these strokes can have a devastating effect on someone's life, leaving them with difficulties with speech, vision, balance, and thinking. But University of Maryland researchers have found that changing one behavior can greatly reduce the risk of stroke in younger women. I'm Sharon Boston, and joining me to talk about this research is Dr. John Cole. He's a stroke specialist at the University of Maryland Medical Center and assistant professor of neurology at the University of Maryland School of Medicine. Dr. Cole is also a clinical research scientist at the Baltimore VA Medical Center. Dr. Cole, your research looked at the effect of smoking and the risk of stroke in younger women. What did you find? Well, essentially is what we found was a dose response between the amount of cigarette smoking and uh, stroke risk. And uh, this had been looked at somewhat in the past, but never in this specific younger population in the detail that we looked at it. And essentially, we found a relationship that can be succinctly described as the more you smoke, the more you stroke. Essentially, women that smoke one to 10 cigarettes per day, this increased risk 2.2 times over non-smokers. 11 to 20 cigarettes, 2.5 times the risk over non-smokers. 21 to 39 cigarettes, which is basically one pack to two packs per day, 4.3 times the risk of stroke, and greater than two packs per day, markedly increased it up to ninefold as compared to non-smokers. That's a huge difference between the heavy smokers and the light smokers. Why do you think it's important to show this dose-related increase in risk? First off, this clearly demonstrates what we all know is that smoking is basically a major vascular risk factor. Essentially, by demonstrating that there is a dose response, this does give people some inclination to potentially cut down. Ideally, though, they should never start, and if they are smokers, they need to stop. How does quitting smoking affect the risk of stroke? Well, there's been numerous studies that have shown that by stopping smoking, stroke risk within about two years returns to baseline. Others have shown a bit further out, such as five years. But bottom line is our study also adds further data to this by comparing our former smokers, which were women that had smoked uh, up to 30 days prior and have not smoked since in a relatively small quantity, their risk was essentially that of never smokers. So definitively, our study does add further evidence that stopping smoking is beneficial. And how was your study on smoking in younger women conducted? Well, this was basically uh, what we call or term a case control study, where we ascertained women that fell in our age range of 15 to 49 who had had strokes, and then did detailed questionnaires regarding risk factor data and other uh, indicators of risk, and then compared them to age and gender and regional control subjects which did not have stroke. So basically we're comparing women of similar backgrounds who did have a stroke and those who didn't have a stroke, and then we compare standard risk factors and, as I said, other more non-traditional risk factors, including genetics, which weren't explored in this study, but we do do that additionally. Your research looked at the risk for ischemic stroke, which is a stroke caused by a blood clot in the brain. How does smoking affect the body and increase the risk for this kind of stroke? Well, there's basically two major types of stroke. Ischemic stroke, which is essentially a blood clot forms and ends up blocking a blood vessel such that blood is not supplied to a certain part of the brain which is basically what we looked at in this particular study. The other form, just for people's knowledge, is when the blood vessel actually bursts, you can get bleeding in the brain. Now that type of stroke, the bleeding stroke, is called a hemorrhagic stroke, and that also is uh, affected and and risk is increased by cigarette smoking. Uh, However, our specific study looked at this ischemic type of stroke, which is basically a blood clot forms and then blocks an artery. This typically can happen through several different mechanisms. Smoking definitively affects this risk in two ways. Uh, Smoking causes people's blood to become thicker, hence more likely to make a clot. And additionally, the chemicals in cigarette smoke aggravate and irritate the inside of blood vessel walls, which makes them more prone to form a clot. So then you have two different mechanisms which are making things more likely to form a blood clot, hence a stroke. 
Have studies of older men and women found similar results that the more you smoke, the greater your risk of stroke? Yes. Uh, this hasn't been looked at particularly recently, but prior studies by the CDC and others have shown that the amount of smoking does increase stroke risk. I recently reviewed uh, some of these prior studies, and actually the amount of smoking that we, uh, or the amount of risk that we found associated with cigarette smoking was somewhat higher than some of these prior studies. So whether this is actually something different in younger women versus older women, we'll have to see. Uh, as I said, we are also planning to do a uh, study in younger men at some point in the near future. This study is part of the University of Maryland's ongoing Stroke Prevention in Young Women initiative. Can you tell us more about this project and what you're hoping to find? It's basically a project that started approximately 10 years ago where uh, young women were identified with stroke and as I've stated previously, match controls were found for them. And then essentially is what you're allowed or can do with that kind of information is compare standard risk factors, uh, look for unknown risk factors such as genetic predisposition and other methods to look for different risk factors. The study actually approximately five years ago also started to include young men and we've recently completed collecting our young men case control sample. So at this point we have approximately 2,000 total participants that have been ascertained through different hospitals throughout the University of Maryland system and as far down as uh, DC, the Eastern Shore, up into Pennsylvania, with each of these individuals with a stroke matched with a regional and gender aged matched individual with a specific case. So this sort of will, in essence, sort of minimize uh, differences between individuals except purely having a stroke and potentially their risk factor profile. And finally, Dr. Cole, a lot of younger people probably think that a stroke can't happen to them. What would you tell them about strokes and how to reduce their risk? Strokes are actually more common than people would typically imagine. Strokes in, in this age group, as I've pointed out, we have over a thousand uh, different stroke cases of varying severity you know, in this precise age range. Uh, certainly cigarette smoking, as we've found, is a major contributor. Uh, standard risk factors that we know about include high blood pressure, diabetes, high cholesterol, poor diet, physical inactivity, with all of these contributing. Uh, certain people would have more likely uh, stroke risk based on genetic predisposition, which is furthermore what we're hoping to ascertain. But the bottom line is strokes do happen. People can develop risk factors at various ages. And an individual who's been smoking since age 16 and say they're 36 has 20 years of smoking history, that's a significant amount of uh, risk has been induced at this point through arterial injury, hypercoagulable state, and then if you add in other risk factors, this markedly increases risk. So stroke does happen in this age group, and the bottom line is, um, is not to worry about it, but just make sure your risk factor profile is as good as you can potentially make it and stopping cigarette smoking is certainly something that would help in that regard. Thank you, Dr. Cole. I'm Sharon Boston. I've been speaking with Dr. John Cole. He's a stroke specialist at the University of Maryland Medical Center and an assistant professor of neurology at the University of Maryland School of Medicine. Dr. Cole is also a clinical research scientist at the Baltimore VA Medical Center. You've been listening to Medically Speaking, a podcast produced for your good health from the University of Maryland Medical Center and the University of Maryland School of Medicine in Baltimore. This podcast is meant to provide general information, not to replace your consultation with a personal physician about your particular health concerns. To reach a University of Maryland physician, call 800-492-5538. That's 800-492-5538. Or visit our website, at www.umm.edu. Again, that address is www.umm.edu. Thanks for listening. We hope you'll join us for other Medically Speaking podcasts.